something green, Tim. Ta da! Do you want the sharp end or the other end? I want the lighter end, please. Okay. This week I bought this thing. It's an Allen scythe. Whoop! Actually, I bought two. Although one is in a few different pieces still. Very good. So we got a spare one yeah. and a new one, just in case. Will and I gave it the once over before we tried to start it, and I thought you might like to see how we got on. Here you go. Ooh. What a machine. So, one of the jobs to do, Will, if you'll help me, yeah. you're going to sharpen the blades. Yeah. Apparently, what you do is just take off two of these uh -huh. and then lever up this spring. But this is okay, it's a dry thing, but it should be springy, yeah. and then you can slide out the the, whole bar, right? the finger bar. Yeah, they're there, but they're not sharp. But it looks like they've all greased, all right? Yeah. And <laughs> what a thing! They had this fascinating um, differential. Oh, yeah, it was looking like some sort of dog clutch on the other side. Didn't it? <laughs> I don't know anything about them really, but the differential works by allowing you to push one side faster than it's being driven. Mm -hmm. Either yeah. side though. Either think, side, yeah. yeah. Okay. Either side. But apparently that means that going downhill, there's nothing to stop it running away with itself. Right, because there's no engine braking. There's no engine all. braking, no. Mm. Mm -hmm. In. And then... See it to Villiers engine. It doesn't have a clutch on the blades. So once you start the engine, the blades are running. Apparently. And, and then it starts going when you rev it more, is it? It does have a clutch on the... On the drive, yeah. Somehow, I don't know, which is... One way is engaged and one way is, oh, right. is not. Yeah, so those are different speeds on that, are they? Or... No. Well, there are... Where are they? couple of notches. Hmm, don't know. <laughs> Didn't come with any instructions. This is the throttle. Mm -hmm. And this is also how you turn it off, apparently. Uh, one quart of petrol. And two measures of oil. And there's your measure. How neat is that? Can't buy petrol and quartz anymore. Yeah. No, <laughs> and that's like, isn't that like two or three quarts or something? Like that. Yeah, I mean, everything's going to be an imperial, isn't it? Of course it is. Well, half inch. It often is, isn't it? So the pulley. Came off all right. That was easy. Yeah. Pull cork thingy. Yeah. So what's holding them? I think it's these, these ring off bolts around the back here, like that one, and probably those two as well. I'm looking for a box of those that I know is in like that. Nice. Ooh. Now somewhere on there is a date, apparently. On this big chunk of brass. Carefully it doesn't start on you. Yeah. <laughs> Probably it doesn't start quite that easily. <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> no, I don't expect it does. Any marks? Yeah, a couple of broken fins. So what's holding it on now? Those... Oh, maybe it's behind you. Ooh, look.
Ilias, England. So all I can see. Hmm. And there's the yeah, points there. Mm, yeah. And it says somewhere that the gap should be um, the size of a standard postcard. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just just before top dead centre. But I don't know how you figure figured it. Yes, exactly. Would someone quickly send me a postcard in the mail? <laughs> when did you last get a postcard? <laughs> yeah. so there's a mark there's there. There's a mark there, yeah. Is there a reference? There is it's something on there as well. Or on the casing up yeah, there. Yeah, look, I would guess that that there is top of the centre, which would make sense. You can get to that easily. But worrying that they're broken fins, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and they're open there at that point, so... That adds up. It looks like a very thick standard postcard, that to me. <laughs> the one sort of postcards they were making back then. Well, so we don't quite know when this was made. They stopped making them in 1973. But I think this is much earlier because it's mm -hmm. it's a two-stroke. Okay, yeah, so the, you probably have a date when they transitioned engines somewhere on the... Yeah, if I could find it, but anybody watching this will, who knows anything about them... Yeah will be astounded at our ignorance. But we're learning. We're learning quickly. <laughs> we promise you we don't, won't do any harm, probably. We're just looking. Pretty much everything has got villas stamped on it. <laughs> it's just a tiny thing. little thing. <laughs> There's probably a Billiards fan club. Yeah, oh yeah. Should have Maybe I should join it. I'll be a fan. If it works, I'll be a fan. Everything looks very good. I imagine the man's been in there recently, has he? No. Uh, yeah. Ten years ago, what? he did it up. And because he, he takes things to shows and things, but he never actually took this one to a show. Huh. And he said when he put it up for sale on Dundee, deal, um, he thought people would just buy it for show, but when I wanted to buy it to use it, he started it. He said it started on the first pull. Does sound a bit rough though, but we've got to make it out that it doesn't really work, and then we fix it. <laughs> to restore a barn find <laughs> restoration. Will it start after all these years? Yeah, can't we hide it in the back of your shed somewhere? <laughs> Cover it with crap. <laughs> and this choke setup seems a bit um, like when right. <laughs> it's going to suck so much. Like negating the filter a lot, isn't it? You mean there's a big gap? There's a huge gap in there. They'd just be sucking in. Just have a look. <laughs> like if you were actually cutting something when there were a lot of seed around or dust around. Yeah, you're right. There's a huge gap there, isn't it? Yeah. Hello. Somebody in there. The filter mesh is well clogged with a oily mix. Much better. It is quite sharp. Perfect. I just lifts up, does it? And these little plates are hinged so that you can adjust them oh, yeah, with the thing at the back. Effort, yeah. I suppose you don't want them tight, but you don't want them loose either, so... They list a whole lot of attachments that were originally available, including some sort of saw, and a snow plow, yeah. and I can't remember all the other things. But it makes you wonder what else we could build for it. <laughs> yeah, but the, it's the drive off this that puzzles me a bit. Like, there must be a different way of taking the drive off it or something, surely.
if, that, if that's just oscillating. At the moment, all that does is swing backwards and forwards rapidly, doesn't it? Yeah. So you'd think you'd be able to take like rotary motion off it somewhere, if it's, you know, for other things. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. So your display in a Shannon is going quite there, anyway. In the online um, instruction manual mm -hmm. from 1957, it doesn't call that thing a choke, it's called a strangler. Oh yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a tickle. A tickle and a strangle. It's <laughs> a little bit graphic really, doesn't it? <laughs> hmm. Oh, the hours that have gone into this. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> I know, I just think it's lovely and we we will put more, if we can't make it work, we'll investigate more. We haven't done any harm, all we've done is good so far, probably. Just mm -hmm. putting some grease and having a check. Yep. Um, it does sharpening the base. It, it so let's, let's start it then. <laughs> Turn the fuel on. Tickling there. <laughs> Get to the tickling and the strangling in a minute. First of all, is, hang on, there we go. Fuel on. Let's see what I'm doing here. Fuel on. Then, that's the tickler, apparently. It's, you pump that a little bit. Oh, yeah. And there was a little bit of a sort of flood. Can you see that? will come out, yeah. Right, and this, the strangler, which I suppose you strangle. You strangle completely to start, wouldn't you? Yeah, so that's like full choke. Yeah. Now the throttle lever, I think up is off. So do we do we start it with open? Don't know. Halfway. Pull cord. If I just put it gently. Oh, move forward. <laughs> Not supposed to do that. <laughs> so smooth. <coughs> okay, I wonder how long you'd last in the closed and space uh, with this. No, no. The blades look very impressive. Yeah, they look very, look very smooth. Yeah, they look nice. It's just that engine is running very roughly. Maybe it just needs proper warming up. We took it to the biggest field where there was less chance of hitting anything. Though pushing it through the mud proved too much for little old me. <laughs> Can I have a bit of a hand, please? Hey!
We hoped it would run a bit smoother once it had warmed up a bit, but it didn't really. <laughs> oh, you've broken it now. <laughs> it's like it's, um, it, it, you know, that's the farting a bit, isn't it? Why does it backfire? Yeah. No, it's perfectly camouflaged. If we walked away, we probably wouldn't be able to find it. <laughs> Even so, we got a taste of what this marvellous machine is capable of. I bought it hoping to cut rushes and docks and other plants that grow in our wet fields where we don't want them to grow. There aren't many in this field so we just played around getting the hang of the strange clutch which jumps into gear with a bang and the strange steering which necessitates the operator running fast around the outside of the turn. But it cut anything we asked it to cut with ease. So far so good, sort of, and it easily drove itself home through the mud. It has amazing traction and power. Don't forget that this machine is at least 60 years old with no new parts in it at all. So we can look at the float now. The now. next day Ashley came round and we delved a little deeper into why it wasn't running smoothly. We, we can blow it out with the airline, can't we? Yeah. There's gunk, gel, oh, yeah. fuel, gelled fuel in the, the needle hole. The, the fuel line was clean now. Mm. So that's the strangler. And quickly discovered a crack in the carburetor. There is a crack. It has been mended, but not very expertly. <laughs> Just giving it a good clean and blowing out the jet seemed to help. We found it could even mow the lawn. But then sometimes the clutch lever would stick and we couldn't stop the machine moving forwards when we wanted to, which was quite disconcerting. So we ended up taking the crank cover off to see if there was a problem inside. Lots of things to remove first. We really screwed up now. <laughs> we'll never get that back on again. It was heavy too. <laughs> We didn't find anything serious, just some impressive engineering. It has plain bearings, isn't it? Look at that, there's nothing. Right. I believe it's not doing anything now. <laughs> there we are. This needs to come up for that, uh, maybe. This is how the clutch engages. working now, why wasn't it working in the field? All these clever people on YouTube. <laughs> They'll tell us, yeah. But look, you can see, you can get at the, at the bearings if you needed yeah. to. But it's all in perfect condition, isn't it? Yeah. Apart from the broken bits. So we put it back together again and took it out to more challenging field conditions. Could it cope? with very wet ground and established clumps of rushes. I 
think the answer is yes. The thing is like a two-wheeled tank. It climbs over anything. Very impressive. I'll try to make another video about our trials with other plant species. And I'll put that up on our other channel because it's more about small holding. Um, in case you're interested, check it out in a month or so. So that's an Alan Scythe. <laughs> I'm a fan. I hope you are too.